In the silent chill of a Scandinavian morning, a grey shape sat at the edge of a frost-lined runway. Its canards twitched like the muscles of a predator ready to leap. The Saab Jars 39. Grippen, small compared to some of the world's giants, but as those who knew it would say, never underestimate the fox just because it's not a lion. This wasn't going to be just another test flight. Somewhere in the shadows of this mission brief, something extraordinary was about to unfold. Something that science itself had written off as impossible. The pilot's call sign was Viper. Years in the cockpit had shaped a man who understood the rhythm of air, not just the mechanics of flying through it. The day's mission was simple on paper. Explore the stress envelope, collect data on control responsiveness, verify performance margins, routine. But the sky had other plans. A front had moved in overnight, laying invisible traps of turbulence and unpredictable winds. The kind of conditions that make even seasoned pilots tighten their grip just a little more. The takeoff was clean, the climb steady. At around 12,000 feet, Viper began a series of high-angle climbs to push the aircraft closer to its stall limits. That's when it happened. Without warning, a savage wind shear struck the Gripen from the side. The nose jerked, the airspeed bled, and the angle of attack needle climbed faster than it should have. Every book, every simulation, every safe-flying guideline said this was the edge. Go further, and you'd cross into stall country, a place where lift dies and recovery is a desperate gamble. But Gripen is not an ordinary aircraft. Its digital nervous system, flight control laws written to dance with instability rather than fear it, kicked in instantly. The canards fluttered, micro-adjustments rippling down to the elevons, countering chaos in bursts too fast for the human eye. Most jets fight instability like a sickness. Gripen uses it like a fuel. The air around the jet was tearing itself into vortices, violent spirals that, in theory, should have robbed the wings of any usable lift. But here's the part textbooks never taught. In the right hands, with the right design, those vortices could be tamed, shaped, and pinned to the wing to generate an entirely new kind of lift. It's called Vortex Lift, and in that moment, Gripen made it look effortless. Viper didn't fight the snap, he used it. The moment the airflow threatened to separate, he timed a precise input, catching the break like a surfer catching the crest of a wave. The aircraft rolled, pivoted, and surged upward again, converting what should have been a drop into an aggressive climb. In the control room, engineers stared at the telemetry, their words falling away into silence. The numbers didn't make sense. According to the model, control should have been lost at least two seconds earlier. According to the model, this was a no-go zone. The first recovery was met with disbelief. The second one, minutes later, was met with stunned acceptance. Gripen had entered a region of flight that science had labeled theoretical and survived it with style. Viper was calm, methodical, unshaken. He set it up again, this time pushing deeper into the danger zone. The air screamed past the canopy, the altimeter spun, and every limit line on the HUD seemed to glow in warning. But the jet stayed alive, balanced on a knife's edge between control and chaos. The third run was the one that made everyone in the room lean forward. Instruments spiked again, airflow began to shred. But Gripen's control system and canards wove those pieces back together in real time. The jet hung in a suspended state, half flying, half falling, but completely under command. This wasn't luck, this wasn't a fluke, 
this was a capability. When Viper finally leveled out, the tension in the control room broke in a wave of nervous laughter and shaking heads. What they had just witnessed should not have been possible. The data streaming in didn't match the old limits. The textbooks would have to be rewritten. For the first time in years, hardened engineers felt like kids again, staring at something they didn't fully understand yet. Viper's voice crackled over the radio, calm as ever. Setting up for another run. His tone carried no drama, no theatrics, just the quiet confidence of someone who trusted both his skill and his machine completely. Somewhere deep inside the hangar, a camera continued rolling, capturing every second of a flight that was about to change the conversation around what fighter jets could do. The sky ahead was turbulent, unpredictable, waiting, and Grippen was heading straight back into it. King I. And this time, it was cleaner. The entry into the danger zone was smoother. The vortices formed earlier, and the corrections came almost invisibly. The flight computer seemed to anticipate the instability before it bloomed, trimming it out before it could even register as a threat. Viper rode the edge like a tightrope walker, with the wind at his back. By the end of the fourth run, the impossible was beginning to look routine. That was the moment the engineers knew. This wasn't a stunt. This was repeatable. And in aviation, repeatable means real. Data confirmed it. Identical entry conditions, identical recoveries, consistent control authority, where none should have existed. The limits had shifted, and they weren't shifting back. So how does a compact, single-engine jet pull off what others wouldn't dare try? Part of it is Grippen's forward canards, positioned ahead of the center of gravity, shaping airflow before it reaches the main wings. Part of it is the flight control system, a network of sensors and processors making hundreds of adjustments per second, keeping the jet stable not by eliminating instability, but by mastering it. And part of it is the pilot, reading the air like a language, translating turbulence into opportunity. In aviation, energy is everything. Altitude and speed are your currency, and bad decisions bankrupt you fast. Grippen's energy management is surgical, every movement calculated to preserve or redirect momentum. Where other jets bleed speed in high angle maneuvers, Grippen bends airflow to keep energy alive, turning what looks like a losing position into a winning one. Beyond the thrill of the maneuver, the implications were enormous. In combat, air is rarely calm. Wake turbulence, microbursts, sudden weather shifts. These are the moments that separate survival from disaster. A fighter that can stay composed, even in chaotic air, buys its pilot options that others simply don't have. Tighter attack windows, shorter landing approaches, safer low-speed recoveries, when the footage eventually leaked to a select group of analysts, reactions were the same everywhere. First disbelief, then a replay, then the question, how? For decades, military aviation had been chasing bigger engines, heavier armament, faster climbs. Grippen had just shown that there was another path, one where brains beat brute force. Viper's own explanation was disarmingly simple. The jet told me what it wanted. I listened. The words said more than they seemed to. The Grippen wasn't just a machine to be flown. It was a partner in flight, a design philosophy that believed agility could be engineered into every line, every surface, every line of code in its control system. Back in Sweden, the team that built the jet studied the data in awe. 
The numbers didn't just tell the story of a successful test. They told the story of a new frontier. The maneuver had pushed past assumptions, past limitations, and shown that what was once labeled impossible was now a trained, controlled, repeatable part of the Grippen's playbook. By the time the sun began to dip, painting the runway gold, the test was over. Grippen taxied back, its canard still twitching like a predator cooling down after a hunt. The ground crew swarmed around it, not with the rushed urgency of an emergency, but with the quiet excitement of people who know they've just been part of something historic. As the canopy lifted, Viper climbed out, pulling off his helmet with the calm satisfaction of a craftsman who had just proven his point. No grand gestures, no victory laps, just a nod to the engineers and a glance back at the jet, as if sharing a private joke with a machine that had just rewritten the rules. Somewhere in the control room, someone muttered, they're never going to believe this. Maybe not today, but soon the world would. Because once you've seen a jet do what science said was impossible, you can never look at the sky the same way again.